Hey guys and welcome to another Monkey Pixels tutorial. My name is Damien Cooper and today we're talking about YouTube compression and how you can get better upload quality out of your 1080p footage. One, two, three, listen. So the last couple of days I've been pretty busy. I've been planning a lot of shoots, big projects and gear reviews and none of these are paid. But don't tell me I don't do anything for you guys because this is all the YouTube content that is coming up soon. But that also leads us to having a really small and short video today, so let's jump right into it. As I've stated in various videos on this YouTube channel that we are mostly shooting 1080p. We are mostly shooting on our EOS R and this is shot in 1080p as well as most of our B-roll, even most of our model shoots are. But as you might have noticed, I'm still uploading in 4K and here's the reason why. When uploading a 4K file to YouTube, even though you shot everything in 1080p, you get so much better quality and that has to do with YouTube compression. A lot of people always complain about YouTube's compression, but what does compression actually mean? It basically means that if you have a large original file and you upload that to YouTube, YouTube takes this file and tries to shrink it as much as possible. Because obviously there's millions and millions of videos being uploaded every day and they just don't have the space for it. The other reason is that not a lot of people have really good internet bandwidth and they need to be able to stream these files pretty quickly. So there's definitely a merit to keeping the files as small as possible. So let me give you an example. Our EOS R records 1080p at around 180 Mbits per second. But when uploading a 1080p file to YouTube, the limitations lie around 8 Mbits per second. So now YouTube takes this 180 Mbit file and tries to shrink it down to 8 Mbits, which is a factor around 22. And that is quite a lot and obviously is really heavily compressed and goes along with a lot of loss of quality. But let's say we're taking the same 1080p footage, put it into a 4K timeline, export and upload to YouTube. Now YouTube grants us around 45 Mbits per second, which is quite a lot more than the 8 Mbits we have when uploading in 1080p. These numbers can be found in the YouTube Help Center, I link that down below and they count for when you're uploading in 24 or 25 or 30 frames, not when you upload at 50 or 60 frames per second. So what happens now is that YouTube takes our 4K file that is still shot at 1080p in 180 Mbits because that doesn't change just because we put it into a 4K timeline and now it tries to compress it down to 45 Mbits per second instead of 8 Mbits per second what it would have done when we were uploading it into a 1080p file. Granted, this is just an example as we're not uploading our footage straight from our camera to YouTube, but we're already exporting it and compressing it ourselves because our editor usually does a much better job than YouTube when it comes to compressing our footage. But now we can export at a much higher bitrate so that we get better quality out of our exported file. Yes, of course, this still has a lot of disadvantages that I actually talked in detail in our Shoot You Shoot in 4K in 2020 video that I recently uploaded because now you have bigger file sizes and it's harder to edit. But overall, if you want to maintain the best quality out of your 1080p footage, this is definitely the workflow for you. And we've been doing this for years now and you can definitely tell the difference. So there you have it. This was just a quick tip and before I ask you to subscribe and like this video, maybe you can also follow Follow us on Instagram because I do a lot of behind the scenes stories and I'm really trying to connect with you guys more and ask what kind of videos you want to see and also run some polls on my Instagram stories. So maybe give me a follow as well. But that's it. You know the rest. Like, subscribe and I'll hope to see you on the next one.